include mutual principles through shared ownership, control, and influence with schools as the main customers and be commercially successful. I can read the proposal is that the company will come into profit in the second year. However, cumulatively, this will, will result in profit in year three. As part of the model, the council will be financially no worse off. This simply means that the strategic income levels currently achieved remains remain stable. At the moment, um, it is proposed that Will will put seven and a half million of services, so something that will, will do really well at the moment, directly into the company, which is approximately 157 staff members who are employed to provide services such as, as cleaning, catering, music services, governance support, and outdoor pursuit activities. I think this is the, the, the interesting part. There will be other services which will be ac accessed through the front door into the company. And this will include services such as additional educational psychologists and educational welfare services, ground maintenance, grounds maintenance, and community control. The report covers matters such as how the proposal was developed to set up a community interest company, the human resources implications of staff transferring, including how pension costs will be met, and issues such as assets, financial, and legal issues. Finally, the report sets out the governance arrangements, the configuration of an operational board, and how elected member involvement will be through the shareholder board. This board will sign off the annual business plan and provide strategic decision making and oversight. And this will include receiving feedback on agreed performance measures. The report sets out the intended benefits for children and young people, schools, councils, and school through trade services. And the recommendations, uh, Chair Arla, the report makes a number of recommendations in three sections. Firstly, direct decisions regarding required to proceed with setting up the company. Secondly, delegated authority to allow matters to proceed, such as the appointment of the managing director. And finally, a section that sets out that sets out that there should be that should there should there be any material change to the financial or other assumptions, then a further report which is presented to the family. Can I just sort of thank the officers from, 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 from the local authority who put in tremendous amount of work in such a, such a short uh, space of time. Um, I, I think it's going to be a really win-win situation for everyone. It will extend the, the number of services that will be available to our schools and, 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 and other clients as well. And I, I'm, I'm sure it will be in, uh, how to improve the outcome for children Okay, thanks for that, Tony. Um, yeah, I don't want to add very much more than to say this is exactly the kind of um, sort of new model, if you like, of, of delivering services that I think we should be doing more of um, in the future. I'm really pleased that we've been able to uh, make, you know, develop this partnership with Cheshire West and Chester. I welcome uh, Mark's um, attendance here tonight and I uh, know his, his involvement. Uh, I uh, had a longer chat with him, Stuart Bellaby at the LGA conference and board. It's a really exciting uh, initiative, so I, I, I do wish it well. Uh, I think it has got tremendous potential, uh, not just for um, doing things in a more cost-effective way, but, but you know, I think the partnership between our two authorities and the, the, the potential for schools to learn uh, and work together and, and, and share good practice, I think, is uh, is really exciting. So, uh, very happy to endorse the recommendations to that you moved. And, uh, you know, we look forward to uh, maybe seeing progress reports on, on the uh, company as it, as it uh, moves forward. So, yeah, so I thank like everybody concerned and um, ask how if we endorse the recommendations. Thank Agreed. Thank okay, thank you. Right, on to item 16 Pets Behind Amalgamation for Boys and Girls School. Yeah, um, yeah, this, this, is, this is very short. Um, just sort of a, 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 a sort of a brief history. Um, the, the, the 
two kinds of secondary schools um, uh, have had a sort of formed a, a, a hard federation uh, since 2010. And um, there's been a single governing body and a single head teacher since that day. Um, and all of that has been by the federation. And at the moment, we work in either school. Um, the governing body of the federation has approached the council and to, uh, to begin a formal consultation on amalgamation. Um, and amalgamation is to be carried out uh, basically by closing one school, uh, school for, for, for males and changing the gender to mix on the remaining schools. So moving on to the girls, the girls uh, uh, sides and that. Um, alternative uh, route could have been to uh, close the school and open a new one, but um, that would have required a competition and the new school would have to be an academy. And that would have added about another six months to the, uh, the process in that. Um, at, at the moment, uh, the two schools are significantly um, underoccupied and, and roads are falling. Um, but the Federation currently has a balanced budget by using reserves. But longer term, uh, this, this, this would be uh, more problematic. <coughs> um, there's no savings to the council um, for, for this amalgamation. But the closing uh, the, the school, there will be a lump sum of about 100,000, which will eventually return to the dedicated school grant, and that's for redistribution to the small schools. Um, amalgamations may result in, in, in some redundancies, um, but uh, school can, school, the school can still decide to uh, subsequently opt for having to take it to the later days, so that's not going to do now. Um, this uh, report recommends that as required by guidance, a six-week public consultation is uh, held on the proposed amalgamation and uh, uh, to closure um, of, of, of the uh, one of the schools and changing the gender intake and, um, of, the, of the girls' school to form a sex secondary school in um, The outcome of the consultation is then be reported back to Cabinet decide whether um, the amalgamation should proceed to the next stage, which is for statutory notice to be published. If so, there's a, a, a four-week representation hearing, and the final decision is then taken by the council's cabinet. So I think, you know, it's, um, it's, it's what the governors are asking us to do, what the schools are asking us to do, and I think, you know, we would be, I would recommend that we Okay, thanks, Tony. Can cabinet endorse those recommendations? Yeah, yeah. Agreed? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on to item 17, highways and transport, the car parking scrutiny review. Now, I'm, um, I'm going to ask Stuart to introduce this. And, uh, I think there's a number of different elements of this, Stuart, so over to you. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, before we can begin, I just invite the to Paul Harrison, who chaired the scrutiny review to the present. Yeah, Paul, do you want to come forward? Because you chaired the scrutiny review, and it, and it is our custom and practice to allow the chair of scrutiny reviews to address cabinet just to introduce your report and the, 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 the key elements. So you're very welcome. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, with this opportunity to present this report, uh, I do welcome it because there's been a, quite a bit of speculation about what this report is all about, um, uh, particularly in the media and uh, by uh, members of the groups. Um, the report is simply um, put together uh, ideas to move forward with a, 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 a coherent uh, car parking strategy for the borough. Um, some consideration and discussion has been given over uh, items such as uh, free, free for free, and uh, people making all sorts of uh, silly announcements about it. The reality is that there's no uh, evidence that that was ever a successful uh, policy uh, for the borough and that any income was ever been over it. So really this, this report sets out to just clear up a few points really. And it was the, uh, the, uh, the task of the group was all party and um, all of the recommendations and proposals given here um, were agreed by all the parties, albeit that, that the last presentation that, that was given on this report very evident that some people hadn't read it and tried to comment and, uh, and give input into it and that's uh, evidence on page 402 where a paragraph has been inserted uh, where the member who made the comments have obviously not read a single thing in the report. So um, 
um, members, the whole purpose of this is to, is to give a basis whereby uh, cabinet and officers can move forward uh, to develop a coherence and our parking strategy for the borough. Uh, we do make a series of seven recommendations. Um, um, they are there for, for members to, to review and ask questions on. Uh, the reality is, as a task and finish group, we're not in a position to to develop a, a strategy or proposals uh, to make recommendations. And the basis of the recommendations have been uh, through a, a thorough study that we've uh, conducted with other authorities, uh, best practice, what's worked for them, and uh, to, to give some guidance to perhaps how officers and uh, members might uh, move forward with it. Um, and uh, as I say, I'm more than happy to, to, to answer any questions uh, on the recommendations as it is here. Um, but for those who, who actually read the recommendations, it's very broad uh, recommendations that hopefully give uh, the cabinet member responsible and uh, the officers involved uh, to come up with a strategy that I think that will be um, not only fair to the residents of the world, uh, but also uh, provide convenience and a progressive strategy. Um, so uh, I'm happy to answer any questions here. Okay, uh, thanks Paul. Um, Stuart, do you, do you want to add anything to that? I'll ask the cabinet if anyone wants to ask any questions. Stuart, if I'm here for a bit of a point from the cabinet. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for the presenting report. I'd also like to thank everyone who's involved in the preparation of the report. Another example of members working together on a cross party basis, studying in these detail and examining uh, evidence and making recommendations based on evidence. Uh, given potential budget implications, at this stage, I propose a cabinet groups as reports and consider this as part of the yeah. can, can I just add, add to that? I mean, I, I, I think it's a really good report, Paul, so congratulations to you and your team. Um, I think I, you know, I've been fairly uh, sort of outspoken. I don't think we've had a coherent car parking policy uh, in this council. Um, so it, it's, it's actually really refreshing to see um, some of the recommendations that you've made, uh, trying, to, it, trying to include, and, and, and it's, you know, it's difficult, a slightly more science, if you like, to, to how we charge residents for parking than we've had hitherto. So I welcome the um, you know, proposals around looking at demand by viability and vitality of the shopping centre in different parts of the world. All of those factors seem to me to be essential if we're going to have a sensible approach to this, this area uh, rather than you know, uh, just, just doing things without any kind of evidence base. So you know, we all say that we do we should look at evidence-based policy and I think this is a really gives us a good basis to do that. I think um, so I, I welcome the, the reports, um, but because I think it, it potentially has financial implications to implement this, I, th I just think it makes sense for us to consider it alongside our other budget proposals. Um, so um, we're noting it tonight, but that's not because we, we want to dismiss it, but I just think because of the financial implications, we need to look at in the round of all the other budget options that we're looking at. Um, but we will come back to it when we, we set our budget in the, in the Week. So, um, should, should we? Should, can, but can I suggest? Can we agree that that position on this report? And I know Stu, you've got something else to move. So, is that agreed, Kevin? Yeah. Okay. Paul, thank you very much for yeah. coming on. Yeah. Really appreciate some time. Thank you. Okay, Stuart. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. As, as we know, the cut is cost of the big prices. Wages not kept up with prices, and that coupled with the rise of zero hours contracts means that many are not feeling the benefits, benefits of any recovery in the economy. The cost of living crisis is also having an adverse effect on our local businesses and our shopping areas. As no policy, we are committed to supporting our local town centres and we realise that Christmas is an important time for families and local businesses. With this in mind, I would ask Cabinet to support the following proposal, that from the 9th of December until the end of December, Council puts the cost of parking in Council car parks by introducing free parking at the PPM. And also on Boxing Day and New Year's Day, council provides free parking all day in the council car parks. Officers also instructed to evaluate any changes in usage compared to previous years in this period. Chair, this I believe will go some way to ease the burden on families and help support local businesses at this important time. 